Hey everyone, I wanted to follow up with a part two to my LoRa training video and this one will be centered around actually using low rank adaptation to create our own LoRa and that sounds maybe more magical or complex than it is but it really isn't and I, and I want to try to cover some of the points about what we are doing so that you can understand why and when and how to be using all this. There is a lot of prep work, to be honest, uh, to get things set up, not in the installation piece, which I have a separate in, uh, video that covers installing all the components, and that's pretty straightforward if you have stable diffusion and automatic 11.11 already up and running. The install is pretty straightforward for uh, this Koya SS package. However, Model training is kind of a whole other uh, kind of hobby or philosophy or however you want to think about it, but there, it's, it's kind of involved. And what low rank adaptation or LoRa is, it's described um, pretty nicely in this paper from 2021, where instead of having a large data set, so if you look at any of the models out on uh, Civit AI or Hugging Face, a lot of them are pretty large, right? And they're large because they are trained on very large sets of information. And of course, they do that so that the model knows a lot, right? I guess that makes sense. What Allura is, is kind of the opposite of that. It's a very small, specific, fine-tuning refinement of information. And essentially what it is, is instead of training the entire model, you take this large base model and instead of training at all of the steps, you train it at only the large, uh, the heavier weight steps instead of the smaller weighted steps. And what you get is this small model, this LoRa that you can add on top of. It can't exist on its own. It's probably going to perform best if it's associated with, of course, the base model it was trained on. But you can take a LoRa and use it with other base models and see what kind of results you get. The package we'll be talking about here is this Koya package, Koya underscore SS, that we've cloned from GitHub. And I already have a video about installing this, and it's up and running. Before I run this, let me just edit this and see. So there's two batch files here. Uh, I made a batch file to start this on an alternate port just so it wasn't um, conflicting with my stable diffusion port. Not that I expect to be running them both at the same time, but just, I don't know, something I felt was important to do. And I, there's also this upgrade uh, batch file you can call. So let me just do that and... Okay, here we are. So, this is what the Koya interface looks like. It's going to look very familiar to Automatic 11.11 because they're built with this same uh, web UI package. And we'll be using the Streambooth Laura tab here. Uh, and we'll also be using this Utilities tab. You're going to need a couple of things. Of course, you need this Koya package installed, uh, which is going to require Git and also Python. You are also going to need two other things. You're going to need an, a set of images to train, of course, which is going to be based on whatever concept you're training. If you're looking to train this on airplanes, uh, that are, you know, that have a single propeller, you, you should have a nice set of images that are single propeller airplanes that you can now train this on. I would recommend at least 20 or more. Uh, I'm using 34 for this example, uh, but it doesn't have to be 34, of course. Probably the more the better, but it is a decent amount of work to kind of get it set up. So I have a uh, LoRa training folder that I just made here in my stable diffusion folder alongside with automatic 11.11. 11. 
uh, Mojo is my cat's name, so that's just what I called it. And then you need to have a log folder so that it knows where to put the logs. You need to have a model folder so it knows where to put the finished model. And then you need your image folder, which should be called 100 underscore subject name, whatever you want to call it. Okay, in that image folder should be your images. Your images should all be the same name with this kind of numeric numbering scheme. Now, I understand if you've gone out and pulled in a bunch of images, this is where the prep work really happens. So all of my images are 512 by 512, and I went through and kind of cropped them all and resized them all to be, that's my cat. Uh, he passed away a couple of months ago, but resize the images to 512 by 512 because stable diffusion 1.5 is um, most commonly trained on images of this size. Also, you get into performance issues and things if you start using really large images. I tried to use various angles, focal lengths, backgrounds, um, you know, these things, kinds of things, so that I could get a nice cross-section of images of my cat. And so I have 34 pictures. If you want to rename all of these things, uh, all of these images in a numeric way. In Windows, it's pretty easy. You just have, you just grab all of the images that you want to uh, name, grab them all, right click and hit rename, put a name in, and if you just say, uh, for this instance, Mojo or airplane or a single prop plane or something, what it will do is it will try to apply that name to all the files. Of course, there'll be a conflict. Windows will automatically append this parentheses numbering scheme, and then you'll have them all uh, numbered like that. Now, you will not have yet these text files, and I'll show you how to create these. Okay, so you have your images. They should be 512 by 512. They should be numerically named like this in a uh, convention. Okay, so we're that far. That's actually a good chunk of the legwork that you have to do to get this prepared. The next thing you'll want to do to get all these text files, and what's in these text files? These text files are, of course, associated with each image. What we have is a text description. So we have Maine Coon Cat with green eyes, curiously standing next to a black barrel. To get these text files, you don't have to write most of this yourself. You can come into this utilities, go to blip captioning, grab your image folder, put your image folder here, and of course you want text file. Uh, you can add, I would say, mojo or plane or whatever your subject is to this blip caption and hit caption images. What it will do is read in, and it's amazing actually, it will read all of your images, put them through this blip captioning processor and try to come up with some text that it thinks your image uh, contains which is fantastic because that's doing a bunch of the work for you. So uh, I recommend doing that. Uh, if I do that now, it's going to overwrite all of these images. Once it's done, actually, yeah, once it's done, you're going to want to go back into each text file and just make sure it makes sense. Uh, you know, some of my text files, it said Mojo is a dog. Some of my text files, it said a mojo is a person, <laughs> you know, depending on the angles and things. So you'll want to uh, you want to come in here and just touch up each of these text files to make sure they accurate, re accurately reflect what this image is. And you may want to embellish it a little, right? You may want to uh, add other bits of information, details, so that when you are creating a prompt, it will have a bit 
more information. For example, you might want to say a full body uh, photo of a cat standing on a floor, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, if it's close up, you may want to say a close up, you know, um, shot of blah, whatever your subject is, or, or different angles from the left side, from the right side, uh, other things that may help you prompt uh, and get what you're looking for. So making sure you're coming in and, and giving a good description here of each image is a, the other half of what is sort of some considerable groundwork. And I think uh, you'll really have an appreciation for the people that are making these LoRa files and sharing them on uh, Hugging Face or, or Civet AI. There's a decent amount of work that goes into making these. Okay, you have your images. You have your text files, which are descriptions of each one. Now what you'll do is come into the Stream Booth LoRa tab Let's pick what model we want to use as our base. Now we can use the base uh, 1.5. I'm going to grab this uh, new RPG Artist Tools V3. And I don't need V2 or parameterization because I'm not using V2. I'm using 1.5. Let's look at what our folders are. So this is where we start associating our folders. image folder. Big surprise, the output folder will be the model folder. You'll never guess the log folder will be the log folder. Uh, you don't need this. And then output model name. This is what you want to name your model. I'm going to call this, I don't know, I'm just picking a name and then uh, I might grab I might grab this for the comments just because I'm slightly crazy about this kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Any other training parameters we want to take a look at? I was really curious about what the heck mixed precision is and should we bother with any of this? So I did a little digging and I found this PyTorch article on what mixed precision is. A lot of this is about resource use and speed and performance. A lot of these things are optional parameters and some of it is going to depend on uh, how well you know the source model. And essentially what we want this to do is say Using this model, take the information we're giving you and train. Run through here and start training. Okay, when this is complete, it will save your model out to where you instructed it to. We have this. RPG Mojo file, which is our LoRa file. Now, in order to use this, you'll want to copy this to your automatic 1111 models. What is this sorted by? Wow. Okay. Models LoRa. folder. And if you check out our lower folder, I'll uh, have this RPG Mojo. Let's click it. Of course, if we click it, we'll add it here. And let me change my model to the model base model that I use for training. And let's see if we can generate something. Uh, we'll want a <laughs> He's not exactly in a battle scene. He's more on a 
carpet. Let's see if we can see. Mojo is a warrior with an axe. Wow. That is terrible. It's got his face, though. That's pretty funny. I mean, these are clearly inspired by our training, but the prompt is definitely going to need a little work. After a little bit of some experimentation, tweaking the prompt and tweaking some of the refinements and things here, we ended up with uh, with this image that I thought was pretty close to the source material and uh, what I had kind of pictured. So you definitely can get some good results with this LoRa training. And of course, the rest of the image generation is still going to be up to the same workflow process of experimentation and things like that, but I didn't uh, I didn't really tweak the prompt. I did have to eventually bump this up to 0 0.7 and then kind of push the colors and combine cat humanoid warrior here with an underscore, but other than that, it was really just uh, the usual workflow of getting an image that was promising, that was in the vein of what you were expecting for an end result, and then continually refining and eventually upsizing that. Hopefully this was worthwhile. I think this uh, turned out great. Hope you found that helpful. Thank you for watching.